This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. All right, we're going to find a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero if it has the solutions a and b. Notice those just don't have numbers, right? So we're going to do it in terms of variables. And this is so we can see if we see a pattern which may help us with a formula. So in the previous videos, here's some problems we did in blue. We found an equation where it was 2 thirds and negative 5. We found an equation where solutions were squared 7, negative squared to 7. We did ones, an equation where it was 5i and negative 5i. We haven't done one like this yet, but this would be kind of hard. I'm just going to show you how that would start. You'd have to write x equals 2 minus 3i or x equals 2 plus 3i, and then that would be x minus 2 plus 3i equals 0. Yikes. Or x minus 2 minus 3i equals 0, and then you'd have to multiply this out, which really can't use the FOIL method because it's a trinomial. So you will get the equation correct if you multiply this out, but it's kind of complicated. So instead, let's see what would happen if the solutions were a and b. All right, so if the solutions are a, a or b, so the first step would have been that that came from x equals a or x equals b. So x minus a equals 0 or x minus b equals 0. So if we write those factors, x minus a times x minus b, and I'm going to write x minus a and, x, and x minus b slightly differently. I'm going to write this as x, mi, uh, x plus a negative a, okay, times x plus a negative b. Okay, you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. So I'm going to do the FOIL method. x times x is x squared. And then I have plus a negative ax plus a negative bx plus negative a times negative b is ab equals 0. Now, what I want to see is what could I pull as a factor, is there a common factor out of these two terms? There's a minus sign and an x. So I could write that as x squared. I could pull out the minus sign and the x. So that gives you a plus b. And I'm going to put the x after the a plus b because usually you see the coefficient of x in front of it. So I'm going to write this as x squared minus an a plus b x. Oops, this was not an equal sign, that was a plus sign. Plus a b equals zero. I have just written a quadratic equation that has solutions a and b. And I can't simplify this anymore, right? Because a plus b, those are unlike terms. I have to just leave it as it is. But there's something really interesting about this formula. It's of the form x squared minus, hmm, what is this exactly? That's really the sum of the solutions, right? If a and b are the solutions, just add a and b. So I'm just going to write out in words what that is, a plus b. There's a minus sign out in front, but in parentheses, I've got the sum of the solutions times x plus, hmm, what is a, b? That's the product of the solutions. Product means you multiply. So basically, I know that's not, we're just writing in words what that is. 
So if I know two solutions, this is telling me that I can go directly to a formula where I put x squared minus, I add the two solutions together and write an x, and then I multiply the two solutions together, add it, and I write it equal to zero. So this is a formula. So x squared minus a plus b times x plus ab equals zero. I think of this as, in my own words, x squared minus the sum of x plus the product. So this is how I might think of it in terms of words. But if we're really talking about a and b, this is how you have to write the sum, a plus b. And how do you write the product? a times b. So let's see how this works on a particular problem. So let's say you know that 5 and negative 3 are solutions. This actually is pretty easy doing it the way we've been doing it. You know that that means x equals 5 or x equals negative 3. So x minus 5 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. You can multiply those two together, those two factors, and we get this equation which is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. So this is an equation having that solution. All right, in this particular problem, my a is 5 and my b is negative 3. Those are our two solutions. What's the sum? In other words, what's 5 plus negative 3 equal to? That's 2. What's the product? That's 5 times negative 3 which is negative 15. I'm saying you should be able to put that in this formula, x squared minus the sum plus the product equals 0, and you should get the same answer. So we have x squared minus. Now what did we get for our sum? So we have a minus. The sum was 2 times x, don't forget the x, plus the product. Instead of writing plus negative 15, I'm just going to write minus 15 equals 0. Hmm. Got the same answer. So we'll do some more problems like this using the formula where maybe we just don't have um, integers. Maybe we have fractions. Maybe we have complex numbers. Um, maybe we have um, other radicals, etc. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.